we have spent over 500 hours building the ultimate desert city in Minecraft. Welcome to Aradar City. We used special building techniques using incredible plugins and software. This let us build quickly and efficiently, but let us also have maximum control over placement and orientation of all our unique builds. We made over 200 new builds. We've also included secret and real hieroglyphics to leave secret messages in our builds. Building round things in Minecraft is difficult. Building round with arches even more difficult, but as you can see, we managed it. We went absolutely crazy making three of the largest pyramids I've ever seen in Minecraft. Underneath this city is a catacomb maze of traps, secrets and treasure. We have also thrown in, for good measure, a sphinx, a coliseum and more obelisks than you can shake a stick at. Welcome to Aradar City. Now this city is downloadable if you are a YouTube channel member or one of my Patreons and these type of videos take a long time to make. If you hit that subscribe button, join me on my journey and you'll be notified of our next builds as well. Now, we needed to decide what would be in a large desert city and we thought a central marketplace would be critical. This is where traders can sell their goods and where the citizens of a city can purchase food, clothing and other necessities. That is what we're building on screen right now. This could be located near the district where the traders reside as well. That could be important. What else are we going to see in this video? A grand temple dedicated to the gods of the desert. This could be one of the city's most impressive buildings and could serve as a place of worship and a center of learning. We'll also have a large fortified wall to protect the city from external threats. The wall could have gates that opened and closed as needed to allow people to enter and leave the city. Now, of course, public baths and fountains would help the citizens of this hot desert city stay cool and clean in the desert heat. Gardens and parks to help people escape the hustle and bustle of the city and relax in a peaceful green space is extremely important for this city. Now, of course, food is important, so we'll need a system of canals to bring water into the city and help with irrigation so that our farms have enough water. A system of roads and streets to allow people and goods to move around the city efficiently is also absolute top priority. Government buildings, such as a council hall or courthouse to administer all the city's laws and govern its affairs will be added. We'll also put in a large, well-equipped military barracks to house and train the city's soldiers. Now this may be in the middle of the sea. Our city is actually next to quite a large ocean, so a military barracks maybe that's incorporated into a naval house, possibly round as well, would be included. And of course, one of the things that a city always needs is some sort of harbour or docks alongside a river or the sea, and that would allow for trade and transportation by boat. Now, the part of the city we're building and starting with first is this circular trading area. It's got a central marketplace where we'll have a large obelisk and some fountains to provide some shade and keep everyone cool. But this is primarily a place where there's going to be stalls, covered bazaars, individual shops with a system of roads leading in and out of this central area to allow traders and customers to easily access it. We'll also incorporate into this trading area a place to store and weigh goods such as a central warehouse or a series of scales. We'll need a system for exchanging money so we'll have money lender booths or even banks. And we should also provide space for guild halls or association builders for traders and craftsmen to meet and conduct business. Inns and taverns where traders can rest and socialize while they're in town also extremely important. I reckon we've thought of everything. We're even going to include public restrooms and washrooms to keep everyone clean. Security measures like towers and guards and gates to protect the marketplace and its patrons. We'll also include signs and banners to help customers find their way around the marketplace and identify different stalls and shops. Entertainment and food vendors will provide diversions and refreshments for traders and customers alike. 
I hope you like how this turned out and this is just the first part of our city but I think it looks fantastic. A big shout out to all the builders who helped me make it and I'll show you their names later in the video. And now we're on to probably the most grand building in the city, the Desert Temple. Now, of course, this could include many different features. There are a lot of options available for us, depending on what the specific culture or mythology that is included into our build. So we thought it should have a really good entrance adorned with carvings or statues. So we put some bird statues at the front of this. Mythical creatures or gods would also be acceptable. Our desert temple is also going to have a courtyard or a garden with plants and water features that are adapted to the desert climate. And that would also provide a way of keeping everyone quite cool. We'll have rooms and halls for ceremonies, rituals or other religious or cultural activities. Now I think no temple would be complete without a place of meditation or contemplation such as a rooftop terrace or a quiet chamber with a view of the desert. And that's what we're building right here at the top. Plenty of terraces with palm trees and places for people just to rest and look out over the city and, you know, have one of those peaceful moments to yourself. We also need to include a library or archive containing sacred text or histories of the culture that built the temple. A shrine or altar dedicated to a particular deity or ancestor is extremely important to include. And also a treasure room or a chamber containing valuable or sacred objects. Now this could be hid in a system of tunnels or catacombs beneath the temple, perhaps used for burial or as a secret escape route. We also included in the courtyard a special pool or fountain that is believed to have magical properties or to be a source of divine inspiration. And now we move on to what's going to end up being the main residential area and an area for business in our city. And as you can see, it's very close to our trading area. So what features should we include in our medieval fantasy desert city in the residential section? Well, buildings made of adobe or mud brick would be expected in a real desert city. And this is what's happened on this planet. An adobe brick is a composite material made of earth mixed with water and organic material such as straw or dung. And that would help to keep the interior cool. As you can see, we developed a whole smorgasbord of buildings here and little pieces of desert buildings. And then what we were able to do, and this is a great way of building, is to apply these small structures to build a bigger one. So for example, a tower, a room, a courtyard, a round dome can all combine to make the houses, the residential, probably some of the richer houses that we included into the desert. And as you can see, all we had to do was place these beside our road and also include some palm trees. Now we used the Schematic Brush Reborn plugin to place these buildings and it made it very easy to do that. We definitely wanted to include in this city lots of narrow and winding streets, possibly lined with gardens or orchards. Some cisterns or underground wells to store water and possibly an elaborate irrigation system. Well, we ended up going for just wells and I didn't actually include cisterns, but I would recommend if you download this, by the way, it is going to be available for download on my Patreon or if you're a YouTube channel member, you can download the city and explore it in Java or Bedrock. I would 
expect some cisterns to be added in and they're just simply big spaces underground and I've actually used these in Jordan. We lowered a bucket into a cistern it was full of water right in the middle of a blazing hot desert at 42 degrees celsius brought the water back up it was a survival trip i was on learning how to survive in these temperatures and in the desert and oh my goodness the water was nice and cool and we could have a great shower we'll also build i think little courtyards for each of these houses to provide a bit of shade and a bit of relaxation for all the homeowners but that was the rich area now look what we're building here this is the poorer area these are probably more muddy bricks that we're using this adobe composite material probably has a lot more mud in it but look at the poor district it just oozes character i absolutely love it So now we decided to think about entertainment in the city and to do that we wanted to build a coliseum but we thought there was bits of the city that were actually missing and we couldn't really incorporate or feel happy building the coliseum without including a city wall for a bit of defense and including a place where we could incorporate industry and one of the most important industries or places to provide wealth to the city would be a port so here is our port now, a port should include a nice wall for defense, a big gate, plenty of places for boats to pull up and unload or load their goods, but also a good deal of warehouses, paths, connecting areas and businesses which can just thrive and run from the port. We also included a harbour master's house. Of course, water is very, very important and incorporating one of the original Minecraft temples, we cleverly put it into an oasis. And at this point, we put a big path around the trading district. This little corner here is super cute and this is where we developed industry. Things like blacksmiths and forges and tailors and tinkers and candlestick makers, whatever we had. This was industry and some more industry down in this corner as well. Then we felt safe. Then we felt that entertainment could be taken care of. Now, this Colosseum I have already built for another build. So we were able to paste it in layer by layer and include a magnificent Sphinx. Shout out to VFDH for building us a beautiful Sphinx in front of our Colosseum. The Colosseum, of course, is a sandstone build. So I think it's found its true home in our desert city. A few palm trees, businesses and paths completed the look. So now we're on to the government building and again I want to give you an idea of our thoughts and just our thinking behind the whole process of building a large building to look after all the laws and the processes of a, a massive city like this. It has to have a unique architectural style, maybe something that you haven't seen in the city already. It would need to be durable, its construction, given the harsh desert environment, the building would need to be constructed with materials that can withstand extreme temperatures, high winds and sandstorms. I've actually been inside a sandstorm and it is quite an incredible experience. We also decided that this place should have a tower or a minaret or dome on top and that could be a symbol of the power and authority. And maybe you could use it even to make an announcement or call people in to prayer. And we're kind of doubling it up as a big council chamber. So underneath that big dome, you won't believe how good it looks. This building is going to have a large room and that would be for meetings of the council or other governing bodies, possibly with a raised area for officials and seating for the public. We're going to have to have offices and admin spaces including areas for record keeping, filing and clerical work. 
Now the whole complex is going to have to have some defensive features so we're going to build a huge wall to protect against potential invaders and we'll station guards at the entrances to ensure the safety of the government officials and visitors. Now this whole place would need to be fairly decorative as well and that is going to reflect the history, the culture of this whole city. So we could have murals, sculptures, tapestries, but I think what we'll probably do is go for an epic floor pattern. As you can see, the inside of this build became extremely complicated. Shout out to Ertz who built the incredible columns that are holding up the roof and for VFDH for the overall inspiration for this government building, including the amazing floor in the center. So two more parts of the city to make, a farm and our military base, which is going to be a circular naval affair. So farms are going to need a water source. So we're having a circular farm with a well in the middle of it and a system of irrigation. The crops that we grow uh, would depend on the climate of the region. It would be great to have date, palms, olives, figs and greens like wheat and barley but we can only do what we could do in Minecraft so it is potatoes and beetroots and I was gonna say onions but that's wrong what else is there carrots that's right and wheat are going to be built we'll also include shade structures these will protect the crops from intense heat of the Sun and they could be constructed over fields but I'm gonna put it mostly over the water as well livestock is something I actually forgot about so Probably if you download the city, you should add some livestock into the farm at some point. Okay, we are on to the military base. Now this military base was going to be round and JJ took the lead in this. A big shout out to JJ and Lynn who built the amazing arches on the side. What sort of features did we try to include into this naval base? Deep water channels so that uh, military ships of various sizes could come and go. Plenty of defensive features. Some storage facilities in the middle and around the outside. We're going to have living quarters, watchtowers, docks and piers to unload cargo and troops. One thing you could add into this would be a dry dock. So maybe one of the bays could be made into a dry dock for ultra realism. It was very difficult to build this, including all the arches. So big shout out again to JJ and Lynn who took the lead on this absolutely fantastic build. Sarasvin as well, helping with the amazing arches in the middle and they extend through the building to provide lots of housing and space for the little boats. Plenty of obelisks and statues and complicated roofs and towers on top of the build in the middle. 
providing a little bridge over here over to a back building and we're going to link this down to the Colosseum so troops could come and go to the Colosseum to maybe uh, enact or reenact or fight in some epic battles as well absolutely super chuffed on how this turned out it looks absolutely wonderful from the sea let's have a look at our city Thank you so much to the epic building team, Linsidious, Aaron, Sarasvin, Dendel, Ertz, Zorani, VFDH, JJ, Darksaber, Tuatha, and Zach, so Raven. You guys are absolutely incredible. Here is inside one of the temples. We have a library in here as well. If you would like to see the full tour of this epic build, then you to become a Patreon or a YouTube channel member. The full tour will be exclusively for those folks. If you'd like to download it, again, YouTube channel member or Patreon, and you can download the entire city, explore it in Java or Bedrock to your heart's content. And if you don't like that, check out my website, andyisyoda.com because you can actually buy the city as well from direct from my website. It has been an absolute pleasure to build. If you'd like to see some more desert style videos, then you can click here or here, and I will see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching. Ciao, ciao. And the blocks be with you.